And in some ways, we be, need to be teaching them before the test is taken as well. We're not teaching to the test. We're not teaching content to the test. The content's being the content they've collected throughout all the years before they come to three, five, seven, and nine. But you don't have that situation in high school, but in primary, grade three face it the very first time, forever. They've never seen it. Sevens and nines have at least seen some part of the test. Let's hope that they have a memory back to grade five and that it's a good memory. Because if it's not a good memory of taking that test, what, what have you set them up for already? Confusion and anxiety. We don't want to do that. So if we present them with a test, to just to have a look at it, play with it, manipulate the pages. What are the features of it? What do you see? How do you use it? How do you do the multiple choice? How fast do I have to write? All those things are vitally important for a child to know before they get there. It's, it's 45 minutes of one year in the life, in that life of a child, right? Four sets of 45 minutes, that's it. It can only be one part of the analysis of the child. We've chosen to look at NAPLAN because we believe this item analysis piece does give you a lot of information and it starts to drill down to the schools. But you have your on-demand, you have your linear tests, you have your adaptive tests, you have your VELs. So there's four parts to that assessment. VELs is our first one. We know our standards, we know what we need to be looking at. Right? Then we have maybe our on-demand. That's going to come in all the years. We have the adaptive test, we have the linear test. So if we do the adaptive, we know which linear test to give them so that we have a benchmark. We have NAPLAN. And then, of course, we have anecdotal observations, all the other assessments that we do during our class time, our conversations with students, listening to them read, running records, or a reading record of some sort. All those four areas give you a picture of the child. On your tables also, I left for you the levels. I want you to use those levels. When you're assessing children, that's the second part of your assessment. No, the levels one, the paper versions, three to six. <coughs> yeah. Uh, seeing that you held that one up, I did provide for you, if they're doing, if they're doing the NAPLAN, three, five, seven and nine, at the time they take the NAPLAN, the expected level is at year seven, 4.18, at year nine, 5.18. So that you could also look at where are they in the other not in the item analysis, in the other analysis I asked you to bring, in this one. May I use that one? In this version, if you can see this, this is the um, student achievement re level report, tabula against VELS. All right, so you can see each child and what level they're at there. And at the time of VELs, it's on, your, it's on your table to look at there. Okay. You can pop your tests and things away now. I think I've, <clears throat> I hope I've set the pathway for you to start analysing that data, to start drilling down into your classroom level data so that you will be finding out which child is having a problem with, can you group those children accordingly and address those issues. All right, I liked the idea of one of the tables over here where you looked also at the strengths out of NAPLAN as well. So if you want to do that particular analysis, that's really great. All right, just take a few minutes now just to pack those up and we'll move on with now 
trying to sort out some literacy pieces that will fit in with what you're trying, what we found here.